Hello, my name is Jonathan Steele and I'm your host of Could You Be More Specific? I'm coming to you through this Way of Stay Woke podcast. And on this episode of Could You Be More Specific, I'm going to touch on parental guidance. And by starting with that, I'm going to address the situation with LeVar Ball and all that what's going on with his family, in particular with his um, his son Lonzo and his son uh, Leangelo. So I know today he's been making a lot of, uh, LeVar Ball has been making a lot of press rounds in particular on Fox Sports, where he uh, was on, I think, Skip and Shannon. He was also on Colin Cowherd show. And, you know, he was a, a tamer, heightened version of what he usually is in terms of talking about his family and uh, also, like, some of the things that he has going on with his new basketball league. Some of my thoughts in regards to that is I'm not a big fan overall of the behavior. I just think in comparison – when you start talking about father, son combos that are in sports, whether it's Archie Manning linked to his sons, Peyton and Eli, or even what you see with say someone like on a, on a smaller scale of that, say Mark, Mike Conley Jr. His father, Mike Conley senior is his agent. And a couple of years ago, he had the biggest contract in the NBA at the time, but no one hears from his father or sees him on you know shows talking. It just because it he doesn't really need that kind of attention. And with that being said, you know, LeVar said, you know, some of the crazy things that he usually says about, hey, you know, he wants all his boys to be together. They all got to be on the same team. And the Lakers, you know, had to move on. That would just be something that Magic would have to do. Eventually, I do think that Lonzo, it's unfortunate because he's a good player. I think he had a good first year as a rookie. 10.7 10.7 rebounds, 7 assists is a good, solid season, especially for it to be your first year in the league. I just don't think in the long run, especially if you're trying to get, say, someone like LeBron or Paul George or even Chris Paul, these are grown adults. They don't really got this kind of time to be dealing with this type of stuff. And especially when you kind of know that the talent portion of it, like I think Lonzo is a franchise point guard. He He's more so of a point guard of, say, 20 years ago where he was a pass first he'll you know he's you know he's a good smart defender and he makes good decisions so he was more of a throwback to that I think a lot of people struggle now because you've been spoiled by scoring point cards but in regards to just some of the things that are going on with him and his dad like releasing a music video and your dad's in it and, and your brothers and it's a lot of people think it's funny and entertaining I know Ice Cube and Marcellus Wiley, they don't really take it too seriously. They think it's all in good fun, and they bring up all the time about him as a, as a parent. And this is where I kind of want to touch on parental guidance. It's putting your kids in a position to be successful is a good thing to do as a parent, but then after a while, that's when you kind of got to fall back and then allow them to go ahead and, and do their own thing. For example, uh, Archie Manning does that a lot with Peyton and Eli. You don't really... You see him on other shows talking about maybe college football and stuff like that, but his main thing isn't pumping up his sons. That's not what he leads with. Uh, Say someone like uh, Cam Newton, his dad, used to see his dad a lot when he went to Auburn. Then when everything happened with him at Auburn, he kind of fell back. And he was around a little bit in his first and second year. And then he was gone, you know, the majority of his career after that until... He made a Super Bowl run, and then he just started hitting up shows. And then, you know, he took a lot of, obviously a lot of credit, you know, for how everything went with his son. But then when they lost the Super Bowl, he was nowhere to be be found in that, which is fine. But I just think as a parent, especially a parent in sports, you got to be really aware of your behavior and how it's going to affect your kids. And then sometimes I think it's unfair. Like, hey, you know, for an example, do I think everything LeVar says Overall, in regards to his kids, it's necessary, you know, out of the realm of possibility. No, I mean, LaMelo, for sure, is someone that people think could be an NBA prospect. Um, Leangelo gets left out a lot, but I actually think Leangelo has a good shot to be in the league. I, I don't think, it, you know, with you got eight or nine teams in the league that always complain that they lose money. And the bigger teams like the Lakers, the Mavericks... The Knicks, they prop up kind of like how it happens in this country. You have about four states in this country that props up the rest of America. Well, you got about five or six teams in the NBA that make money, essentially. 
or that make the lion's share of it and they prop up, you know, the mid and lower tier teams like Memphis, Utah, San Antonio, stuff like that. So, but I think with Leandro, it would be nothing if, say, one of those type of teams like Detroit or Atlanta or Milwaukee were to spend a second round pick on them because that'll bring a lot of attention to their team. And it's no different than, say, even with LeVar's League, I don't know uh, all the sponsors and all the people that are going to be behind it, especially in terms of coaching, if he's getting high school coaches, college coaches, or any ex, you know, NBA coaches to help him run the league. But it would be something that you would have to probably look on as it goes further on. I know it's been some things up in the air about his league and the financial upside of it because a lot of it deals with sponsors. And, hey, he's a marketing machine. If you had to say who's a top five, top ten person in, in the country in terms of getting free advertising and marketing, LeVar Ball does that to the T very well. It's just right now with his son, to have a video come out where you're dissing a teammate, even if it's for fun, uh, right now it's just it's not a good look for the Lakers. Because right now they're trying to present themselves as a team that's ready to make a jump. And I don't know what this obsession is with some Laker fans who like how this young team is developing. This has been a losing franchise essentially now for the past six seasons. Like, I think the last time they made the playoffs was, what, 2012? You know, this whole, like, let's see the young guys develop. It's like, are you serious? For what? And the top two Lakers that most people talk about are, ironically, Lonzo Ball and Kyle Kuzma. But if you were asking probably LeBron, Paul, George, and, say, Chris Paul, if they ended up on the team, two of those four guys would have to be gone. And if you would ask which two they would want to keep, they will want to keep the quieter ones, Julius Randle and Brandon Ingram, the two better players. And I get it. You know, it, it they're, they're fun and they're just having kicks. But it's like if you're trying to get a prime generational type player, this is you got to be a pro. So you can't be in this kind of stuff. You can't have no clips coming out about making this records or saying you're not going to recruit anybody. And kind of moving on from from that, I know I did a previous episode on controlling the narrative. Uh, I want to touch on that with Kobe Bryant. And I know Kobe Bryant, I love Kobe too. He's had a story career. He's probably the second best two guard in history. He's definitely a top 10, top seven player of all time. But the thing that he said about LeBron today was just, I was so surprised because in comparison to their careers, you know, to be fair, like, you haven't done as much with less talent as, say, LeBron has. Uh, you played on a team with the Suns, when you went up against the Suns, where you blew a 3-1 lead. This guy came back from a 3-1 lead, not just in the finals, but he did that in his fourth season against the Detroit Pistons. I think people forget that. He came down from 3-1 against the Pistons in 07 to... Then go into the finals and they got swept by the Spurs. Of course, that's still going to still be held against them, and that's fine. But that happened. Same thing that happened with this series and previous series that he's had before. Like, LeBron has done more with less than any player in NBA history. And I know for him right now, it's a lot going on in terms of, you know, some stories coming out with his sons. And, and I think LeBron's done a great job, especially as a father on trying to keep the focus on his kids because no matter what, just by default, his kids are going to be in the limelight because of his father, but it's based off his father's play and what he means to the game. In comparison to LeVar, his kids are linked to him by something crazy he said on a sports network show. That's the difference between those two. For LeVar to say like, hey, Paul George, hey, you know, Bonzo's going to make you better. It's like you're talking about a guy that's been to a, a conference finals and has taken LeBron to a, a best of seven at his height. The only reason why Paul got hurt was he got hurt in the Olympics. I think there's a certain level of humility. He has to kind of come at talking about his son. You can say your son's great all you want to, but you, you got to still respect the game and you don't hear LeBron talking about how great his sons are going to be. He thinks that they have the chance to be potentially really special basketball players, but he's not, going to go over the moon about that. 
you know, so I think those are some of the differences, I think, between those two and how they raise their kids and how we celebrate it. Because ironically, especially, especially I think with the majority of a lot of commentators on TV, especially the ones that were ex-players or say someone like Ice Cube, like people be giving him like, they people give LeVar like bonus, bonus points because his son's got scholarships to UCLA. It's like, hey, that's a good thing. That's good, but does that make up for some of the stuff that you're saying where it's like, hey, you know, my son's better than Steph Curry? Well, you know, he has to believe his son is great. Like, yeah, his son is great, but his son was an unproven commodity, and you're mentioning a league MVP, and your son's better than him? That doesn't make any sense. Cam Newton's father didn't come out and say, hey, you know, my son is better than Aaron Rodgers. And he hadn't played a down yet in the NFL. He didn't say nothing like that. I'm out, you know, I can't really, so I can't really say, it's, is it a basketball thing? Which I, I, I know, it, you know, it's always had a bravado to it, but it's not that per se. You know, some of it is just self-awareness that you kind of got to have when you start talking about that. Those are just some of those things that I kind of think with LeVar, sometimes he kind of be missing the boat on. It's like, you can't, you can't put certain organizations in this type of position because for Magic, Magic is really trying to vindicate why he was hired. So you being involved in this type of stuff is, is like you're playing a dangerous game here. And you could say like, yeah, well, you know, he's got to do what's best for him. If they were to do a three-team trade where Lonzo ended up in Oklahoma City or Houston or in a doldrum type Atlanta or Detroit type scenario, we wouldn't hear about Lonzo Ball like that. It'll be probably fun and fun for them. I think they'll still try and do the same things, but it wouldn't be the same thing at all. And though, so those are just some of my thoughts in regards to that. The Kobe thing was just really, really interesting because like Kobe just won an Oscar like a couple months ago. So for him to be talking about LeBron's got to figure out a way to win and him going up against the Spurs and it's like, yeah, you lost – the last five, six, several seasons of your career, you got beat by the Spurs. You know, you were gift wrapped pal, pot, pal Gasol. You weren't even getting out of the first round at post Shaq. Do I think they made the right decision by keeping Kobe over, over Shaq? Yeah, because Kobe was the more disciplined player, more focused and more driven. But in terms of elevating his teammates, that wasn't his thing. That's always been LeBron's thing. And that kind of goes to show you even for, say, someone like a Michael Rappaport who's still kind of going hard about saying, hey, you know, Jordan never got swept in the finals. It's like, well, Jordan and LeBron have something in common. They both have been swept. LeBron in the finals, Jordan, I believe, in the first round. A loss is a loss last time I checked. But to me, if you really need six, if you need the six for six and that's all they keep holding on to, then then you've really lost already. Because if I beat you nine out of ten on your on your check mark sheet, you're you're done. And that kind of goes back to that bad teacher clip with the Jason Siegel and arguing with the kid about LeBron and he just said, call me when LeBron went six championships and that's the only argument. That's a losing argument. So those are just some of my thoughts I had on that. I'll definitely probably pick back up on this real soon. Obviously all this stuff is still evolving. I want to thank everyone that's uh, taking the time to listen to the show. I want to thank Dee for helping me put this thing together. Definitely like, share, follow. I'm looking forward to doing more of these. Again, my name is Jonathan Steele. Thank you for listening to Could You Be More Specific. Coming to you through the way of Stay Well Podcast. And I'll see and talk to you guys real soon.